What's up, I'm Troubleshoot, let's talk about optimizing Marvel Rivals for the best competitive edge. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, this video is mainly going to focus on the in-game options rather than optimizing Windows. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, NVIDIA, and other related optimization guides to get even more performance from your system. So, start off by clicking the cogwheel in the top right, followed by settings or pausing and going to settings. And on the display tab, there's a few things we'll do here first before we get to optimizing. Make sure limit FPS is turned off unless you're a streamer, OBS is lagging, or YouTube videos, etc. In which case you can enable this and cap it to just slightly below the FPS number you're getting after this optimization guide. So if you're getting 240 FPS, cap it to just 220 to leave some extra headroom for your system. For now though, I'll leave that off. Make sure show FPS is turned on to see your FPS counter in game and you can enable network stats as well to check your ping and other issues. Make sure VSync is turned off unless you're getting screen tearing, it'll help a lot with input latency. And besides that, playing borderless windowed is definitely good if you like tabbing out to go to Discord, videos, Spotify, etc. Full screen may take a while to tab out. Usually, full screen should give you slightly better performance, but for me, usability over performance. If you have it set to full screen, you can set the aspect ratio and your resolution. Just make sure those actually match your display to get the best visual clarity. Speaking of, if you choose to use upscaling, which you probably should for better performance, use either DLSS or FSR. TSR applies an even blur across everything and XCSS, well, you may get mixed results with that. If you're running anything but an NVIDIA graphics card, set it to AMD FSR. If you're using NVIDIA, try DLSS, it should give you a slight quality boost. Then super resolution mode should be either ultra quality or quality for a slight to slightly bigger performance boost while not making weird artifacts appear that could be distracting from general gameplay. Super resolution sharpening is your preference. Frame generation should absolutely in pretty much all cases be turned off. Not only does it increase input latency, but it can also cause your FPS to drop on certain hardware as it needs to pace itself to generate frames in between. It'll use more of your graphics card and things like that. It's just a bad idea to have on at all in any competitive game. Low latency mode should definitely be turned on to NVIDIA Reflex low latency. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, this may be an AMD option on AMD graphics cards. I'm not too sure about that. Brightness is your preference, and that's pretty much it for the display optimization. Scrolling down to graphics, we can use optimize to let the game pick for us, and for me it's chosen these options here. If you have a powerful system and it chooses high for you, things might work pretty well. But for a huge boost in performance, disable anything Lumen related. So Lumen Global Illumination, I'll be changing this to SSGI rather for a good boost in performance. And screen space reflections over Lumen will also give you better performance. That's pretty much all that you need to do for high-end systems. If you're running a much lower-end system, definitely lower SSGI all the way down to low quality. Reflection quality leave as screen space. Model quality you can usually leave it high, but you can drop it to medium. Post-processing low shadow, low textures. You can leave it high unless your graphics card has a super low amount of VRAM, in which case you can lower this. And if you have anything above 6 gigs of VRAM, you could probably raise this up to ultra for a good quality boost without any FPS costs. Effects detail down to low and foliage quality down to low as well. These are super optimized settings to get the best performance on low end hardware. You can lower things further, but it's not really going to result in too much of a positive FPS increase on most setups. For me, I'll be able to apply my changes and that's pretty much that. On the audio tab at the very top under audio, you'll find 3D enhancement, which you can enable if you're using headphones, which should give you better 3D audio of what's happening around you. HRTF, you can enable this and you should be able to better place things just by hearing them. Other than that, I'd probably lower the music volume and that's pretty much that. On every other tab, it's pretty much your preference. I would recommend checking the social tab where you can hide your history from other players and things like that if you wish. It's good to know that this actually exists. On the other tab, you can run diagnostics if you think something's wrong with your network. That's a great thing to have. And that's pretty much that. With these optimized settings, you should see a big boost in performance. And I'll show you now the difference for me. We'll start off with the unoptimized basic default settings that it chose for me. All right, so dropping into game here, it seems like it is one of those games that'll eat my entire system, causing the video to lag, possibly. 
so if things start stuttering, that's OBS rather than the game, and you can see my FPS on the far right. Already, 43 FPS is not looking too good. And there we go, we're in game, we're at a solid 65-ish FPS, which isn't too good, but of course we are in just the starting area. In actual combat, things may drop quite a bit as there's lots of effects and things like that happening. I am running a super high-end system, a 3080 Ti, and I'm playing at 2K, so this FPS is okay, and that's saying, well, quite a lot. You should hopefully be able to expect relatively similar performance based on whatever it chooses for you, which may be medium or possibly lower. If we pause the game and enable a DLSS to say ultra quality or quality rather, we should immediately see a good FPS boost. And now we're sitting at a solid 75 FPS without changing the game's visuals all that much. It may be slightly blurrier, but that's about it. If we pause the game and turn off anything Illumin related, so reflections and global illumination, all of a sudden our performance should jump even more and we're sitting at a solid 90. I'm still playing on the same match, the same system, so things have improved quite a lot. Now, if I quickly apply my optimized settings, we should see a big boost in performance, but of course not as big as restarting the game after we make those changes. Some things may only apply on game restart. So, using our optimized settings, heading back into the game, we're still sitting at a solid 90-ish. It seems like a restart may be required for most of these settings to take action. Of course, when we do that, the map is likely going to change, so it's not going to be one-to-one -one the same, but you should see a general improvement on most systems, especially if you're running a lower-end hardware. This game is running Unreal Engine 5, so optimization is something that's usually going to be an issue, but for the most part, it's not too bad on higher-end systems. If you're running a super low-end system, I'll show you a config in just a moment that'll drop everything down pretty much as low as possible lower than what you can actually set in game and you should see a huge performance increase however my fps hasn't jumped all that high simply because i'm likely cpu limited at this point we've just lowered the options using less of our gpu so there is still something bottlenecking my system and usually you'll be able to raise some of the options without taking away any performance at all to make things look just a little bit better so there we go match over let's get to seeing some super optimized settings so, closing out of the game, hold start or the Windows key and press R to bring up the run dialog. And inside of here, type in percentage local app data percentage backslash Marvel. As such, just hit enter and this will open up your Marvel configuration folder. Inside of the saved folder, config Windows you'll find game user settings.ini. All of your in-game settings are saved in this super simple text file. Open it with any text editor, such as Notepad, and you can adjust everything in really great detail. Of course, being Unreal Engine 5, these are put into groups, and we can customize these with options that aren't even visible in the in-game options menu. In the description down below, you'll find a Reddit post linked that has a custom config made by this person here. If we open this link, which you'll find down below as well, it's a paste bin with a bunch of different settings for the game. If you're running a super low end system, this essentially pushes the game down to potato quality, getting you huge FPS or at least playable FPS if you're stuck on something super low end. Simply choose raw, control A and control C to select everything and copy. Then inside of your game user settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, add some new lines and paste this in here. This is already assuming you've dropped most of your settings in game down to low. Once you've made your changes, save the file and close it, then right click it, choose properties and inside of here make sure read only is tick and click ok now these game settings should essentially be locked and the game won't be able to overwrite this file and change our extra settings we put in at the bottom so whenever you change graphics options in game when you restart the game your settings will be reset back to whatever these are to change your settings in game right click properties and make sure read only is unticked ok now we can restart the game in potato quality mode and assuming you're running something super low powered, you should see a good improvement. For me though, don't expect too much. I'm likely CPU limited at this point rather than a GPU. So lowering the in-game graphics options is probably not going to get me too much extra performance, but for some people, it may be just enough to make the game playable if you're running something like an integrated GPU rather than a dedicated one. Searching for a game. And there we go. We've now moved up to 110, maybe 120 FPS, which is a big improvement just by making those few simple changes and dropping some things into our config file. Obviously, this game does still need quite a bit of optimization to get super competitive, but for the most part, on most modern systems, it's going to run just fine. But anyways, that's really about it for the super quick guide. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.